welcome back to my channel. Today is another impromptu video which actually yeah it's completely impromptu because I am sick again and recovering. <laughs> I spent the last weekend or the Saturday of last weekend in hospital so haven't been feeling well for a couple of days which is why I've been mentioning on my vlogs um, and over on my socials just not been feeling myself and then on Saturday I just really didn't feel well had a lot of chest pain and nausea and some other bits I'll describe in a minute um which resulted basically in being asked to go to hospital by my doctor or the doctors who were around at the weekend and yeah yeah not been very well so but with that I really thought it'd be helpful maybe for myself as a bit of a kind of a vlog so I can then journal and see how I recover hopefully from this as well and feel much better but also then because there's not much information out there from just kind of Joe blogs like me saying what it's like to have this condition and it'd be really helpful because I know I'm struggling I'm trying to find information right now I'm trying to find support groups and I'm confused so I've also got my little companion Harley who's keeping me company while I'm not feeling well say hello and yeah I'm off work for a couple of days gonna try and go back in tomorrow not feeling good but I'm just gonna take it steady so I've definitely reduced my activities of what I normally would be doing so, as you would have been able to see from the title, I am going to be talking about myocarditis. Um, and this is something that I kind of came to know or discovered a couple of years ago when I first came down and was diagnosed with this condition. Thank you so much for the kisses. I discovered that I had myocarditis or I was diagnosed with it after I had the last COVID vaccination that I had. I've had two vaccinations. The first one I didn't feel well after, but wasn't sure what was going on. Had the second one and it exasperated my symptoms. Went to A&E, had to have a stay, had a lot of chest pain and things going on. And we figured out actually that I had developed myocarditis as a result, we think, of the vaccination. This is not a post or a video about vaccination bashing or anything like that, because I know it really helped a lot of people. I personally just cannot have any more. I've reacted to it. So I don't have any more vaccinations. I've stopped having them now. And as a result, have been left as many people have with different things with COVID, whether it's COVID itself or the vaccination, I've been left with myocarditis. I then had another bout of myocarditis happen last year. So I've had it kind of every, once every year and I've just literally had it two days ago <laughs> come out or three days ago now. And this is my third bout. So we're going to be doing some more investigations and I'm waiting now for an MRI, a cardiac MRI to see what is going on, see if there's any scarring, see if we can figure out why this keeps happening. Although we have learned the pattern that it tends to happen after I've developed a virus or a bug or something like that. I don't feel good. <laughs> I'm not wearing any makeup and I just I just don't feel good. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that maybe this will help others or maybe I'll be able to find some other people who've had myocarditis and can give me advice or we can just support each other. So that's really the purpose of this vlog today. So symptom wise, for me, the symptoms this time with this episode have increased from the last time. So initially I was experiencing some shortness of breath, especially walking upstairs and things like that on exertion, a lot of chest pain and chest tightness around my actual heart. It didn't spread too far at the time, but it was more centralized around that kind of chest area. Nausea, dizziness, and just generally not feeling great, which was normally as a result of having a cold or a virus or a bug or something. This time, this time has come on a lot more rapidly. So like I briefly mentioned a minute ago, I spent five days feeling really dizzy and having nausea, waking up kind of in the middle of the night and kind of, I want to say gasping. It was definitely like I'm trying to find my breath. That's never happened to me before. And that has just been happening in the last week. So it's kind of those main three things before Saturday. And then on Saturday, I woke up and had those same symptoms, didn't feel good. Realised my chest is starting to hurt a little bit. So I thought, mm, okay, maybe it is coming back, but let's just see what happens. I'm pretty good at ignoring symptoms and ignoring things and not going to any because, well, I don't want to. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in hospital over the last few years and I like to avoid a husband if I can help it. So I just ignored it, got on with my day, things that we were doing. And then when I was out with my husband, definitely the pain suddenly went from kind of, you know, here in the background to, wow, I'm really, I'm struggling. And it had spread, it never spread like this before. So this time, and I'm still feeling kind of the remnants of that, it has spread to my, um, 
So around my heart, a lot of pressure and pain, then it all spreads out downwards to the top of my stomach. So not in my stomach, but kind of pushing down onto my stomach. It has also gone to my shoulder blades, so between my shoulder blades, really painful and still hurting now. Had also spread up into my jaw and my teeth. My teeth were so painful, like you're chewing on ice or something specifically the bottom half as well and then also my left arm my left arm is really painful and is still really hurting i then developed really quickly pins and needles in my extremities and they went freezing cold my hands are still cold but definitely not like they were i was getting very sweaty palms but it was cold sweats i was not having a fever i didn't have a temperature but it was definitely cold sweats and very clammy so I called my GP or the kind of on-call GP that we have here in the South. I think it's the same for the whole of England actually, but I'm not sure where some of my viewers are, but in England we have 111, which is a non-emergency number to call for a doctor at the weekend. And then they'll kind of go from there, whether the doctor can see you, it's over the phone advice, or whether they need to get you seen at hospital. So I spoke to them, they called back very quickly and ascertained actually we want to get an ambulance out to you because we're concerned and we need you to get another ECG. I've had many ECGs over the last couple of years and also to get some bloods to check my, I hope I'm saying this correctly, my troponin levels, which is basically when you are having maybe a heart attack or something to do with your heart, usually if it's something serious and your heart is really struggling and I think it's something to do with the muscles or the structure of the heart breaking down a little bit i could be completely wrong with that i'm not um, a medical professional this is just from what i've been picking up and learning myself that is then picked up as troponin in your blood and if it's elevated it means okay there's something definitely more going on so yes yeah, so i went to any &E basically and had excellent care as always really really good care they straight away got my ecg on it wasn't quite happy to start with but then after a little bit it did settle down and they gave me some TGN I think it was called spray I've never had this before it was a spray under my tongue and basically it's meant to open the blood vessels in your heart and actually in your whole body to try and help get blood through in case you are having a heart event something's going on it definitely reduced my pain in my heart and my chest and did kind of mellow the pain out they said that regardless of whether you were having a heart attack or not it would just mellow you out anyway and it did so that was really helpful it also gave me a corker of a headache which the nurse said it would of course after she sprayed it in my mouth which is amazing yeah so that wasn't great but it was perfect for getting the pain down and i've never had that one before but that's really good to know in future that that's something that's available for kind of immediate pain relief just because also i'm allergic to a lot of pain relief like codeine and things so sometimes they struggle to yeah manage my pain so once the pain got down i had an ecg like i said and then my kind of readings were coming down and being calm i then had my blood test which was absolutely fine for troponin and then they tested it again uh, i think it was two hours later and it was absolutely fine so that was positive it just basically means that and from their wording that there's nothing serious going on that we need to intervene with right now yes you're going through another episode of myocarditis but you're having a heart attack you haven't got angina you know that's perfect so i was able to then go home because i've no how to manage it really and it is just about rest pain relief and, and knowing that if I get any worse symptoms then I'll just go back. In the meantime I have spoken to my normal GP who has now referred me back to hospital to the cardiology team to have some more tests. I've had echoes before, I've had different tests done but now we need to look at doing cardiac MRI they think to see if we can find something that's going on or see if there's any scarring so just to try and understand why this keeps happening. It's the third time I live a healthy life, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I eat healthily, I try to keep active where I can, so there's no kind of big flags as to, oh, it's this that you need to reduce, or if you stop doing this, maybe this will help. The same with my high cholesterol, it's familial based, I'll be doing another vlog or another video on that, but I am having genetic testing soon as well in May, so there's lots of kind of cardiac bits going on, but we're just trying to now understand this part. I think the main thing as well for me now is left in that kind of middle zone of is it going to come back the guys at any &E very much said see you next year because it seems to be an annual thing at the moment and knowing when it's coming back because like i said this time started differently it was very much didn't feel well for a couple of days but nothing chest related just dizzy nausea could have been a bug or virus and then suddenly bam it came on quickly previously the pain has been very slow and come on slowly so this time was different and for me to get pain in my jaw and my teeth in my arm 
that didn't happen before. So, and I'm left in a situation where if I get pain like that again, I've been told I just have to go to A&E every time and get ECGs and have my bloods checked again. So it's quite frustrating. I've got big holidays coming up this year. I'm gonna have to relook really at my holiday insurance and yeah, just figure things out. But I thought maybe just doing this quick video to maybe to bring awareness to myocarditis, I am very much at the beginning stages still, even though it's been three years because I've only had a couple of episodes and no answers as to why it keeps happening. <laughs> Is it just bad luck? Who knows? So I am hopeful that there's someone out there that maybe will have experienced this or is experiencing this or I can connect with some people. I'm definitely going to research this more myself because I'm an avid researcher. I'm not a Google doctor, but I definitely try to get the facts and figures so I can understand conditions and understand maybe alternative medicines or alternative options of treatment. Sometimes that's just, yeah, it's easier because we have the time to do that. I will also just say, and I'm going to read this out quickly because I can't remember this off by heart, but it, I haven't even said this yet. So myocarditis, what it actually is, is an inflammation of the heart tissue, specifically the myocardium, the middle layer of the heart wall. And it says it normally affects your heart's electrical system and muscle cells. It leads to regular heart rhythms and problems with your heart's pumping function, which would also make sense why when I had the medication to kind of open my blood vessels, it did suddenly improve the pressure and the pain because obviously everything's pushing through quicker. But then also why they check your ECG as well, because they want to make sure is your heart beating normally. Mine is currently beating okay, so that's perfect. Yeah, so I don't know. I hope this little kind of vlog was helpful. It's a really short one. I just wanted to to touch on where I am on now. This is day three post third episode. I am gonna kind of keep a diary and just see how I recover. Last time it took me a good month for the pain in my chest to stop um, and the other symptoms and the dizziness to stop and then about six months before I felt fully recovered. I have no idea if it's gonna be the same this time. I'm already feeling that I'm really tired for doing this. I'm talking a lot and I'm feeling out of breath and tired. I'm in pain sitting here. My chest is really hurting, my arm. Um, I'm just about to try and eat some food to see if I can eat because I've been really struggling to eat because of the nausea. Yeah, so I'm going to keep a diary, but if anyone else has experienced myocarditis or even pericarditis, they are different, but in the same family, I don't know. I'm just looking for answers and for support and to see if I can help other people and likewise see if anyone out there has had this. So if you have, please comment below or send me a direct message. It would be great to hear from you and I will keep you up to date. Hopefully it won't be long before I'm feeling brighter. I am gonna go try and go back to work tomorrow. I'm just gonna take it easy, but I'm not a good patient. I don't wanna sit at home for days. It's not in me. I'm bored already. So have a good day, everyone. I hope you're well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.